Ready Player One takes place in the future where everyone basically lives in a VR video game called The Oasis. However, the creator of The Oasis has passed away, leaving his world in the hands of whoever is able to find his ultimate easter egg. This movie was kind of polarizing for me. My initial feelings were pretty positive upon coming out of the theater, but after thinking about it more, I noticed some issues. Now firstly, I want to start by saying I love the world they've built here. The look and feel of the Oasis really got me invested into the story and is really where the film shines. Obviously this is mainly achieved by the hundreds of cameos and easter eggs referencing other movie and video game properties. For the most part, they were sprinkled in subtly enough to not be too distracting, but I'll get more into that later. The world outside of the Oasis however was pretty bland and didn't really get as fleshed out as the virtual one. It's weird because that version of reality is why Spielberg was so interested in adapting this book in the first place. I'm surprised he didn't really dig deep into a lot of the important questions this movie could have brought up about technology's effect on our future. One of the film's main problems is with its characters. None of them really stick out and are pretty underdeveloped throughout. They tried to give the main character Wade Watts, played by Ty Sheridan, some sort of background by showing his harsh family life, but those scenes were so brief that they really didn't succeed in getting me attached to who he was in the real world. Everyone else basically just existed in the virtual world for the most part, not really getting any development until the end of the movie. Ben Mendelsohn was great as usual in the villain role, but was just your typical corporate asshole in the end. The plot kind of falls in the same boat. It's basically a treasure hunt for these three keys, which is functional enough for this kind of movie, but the fact that there are so many players in the game makes it kind of unbelievable that Wade is able to figure everything out without much competition. The third act especially felt bloated and took a turn that made the rest of the movie so predictable. Like once I heard the words, welcome to the rebellion, I was like, Oh god, because seriously how many times have we seen that get pulled out in the middle of a movie? Otherwise, lots of things happened in both the real and virtual world that I felt were too convenient or nonsensical, but with how long this movie is, I get that maybe they had to cut a lot of corners to get to the more important stuff. Now I know I'm sounding pretty negative, but despite Ready Player One's flaws, I still really enjoyed watching it. For one, I thought the action scenes were excellent, they were incredibly well shot and just plain entertaining to watch. I also love the ideas for each of the challenges for the keys. No spoilers here, but the second challenge especially kept me smiling at the screen because of how mind-blowing it was. And that brings me to why I began to rethink my opinion on the film after watching it. You see, I realized that most things that I loved about this movie had to do with my nostalgia towards the many references to other properties I already like. It was so sad for me to realize that if this movie didn't have access to all those other things like the Iron Giant or the DeLorean from Back to the Future, it really wouldn't be that special. Especially at the end when there's this giant war with all these iconic characters, I realized that people only cheered at the cool cameos and not really at any of the crucial character moments the filmmakers want us to care about. You see, Wreck-It Ralph was a movie that did this kind of thing right. When it was being advertised before release, a lot of the marketing weighed in towards showing off the video game characters that Disney bought the rights to. When the film came out, most of those cameos were basically taken care of in the first act when trying to flesh out the world of the arcade. However, once the plot got going, the movie focused in on building our main characters, which as a result allowed for a more emotionally resonant ending. So yeah, Ready Player One is by no means a bad movie. It's really just the overwhelming nostalgia of its references that keep it from being your average dystopian future shit. I'm gonna give Ready Player One a 7 out of 10. Honestly, because of how much fun I had with this one, I would still recommend you guys check it out. Especially because this is probably the only time you'll see a Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter crossover.